Dr. Reed, take a moment to consider. The post would be for the night shift, providing a good explanation for your absence during daylight hours. You'll be adequately reimbursed and have a place to hide. I even had the forethought to bring some clean clothes. Very generous of you. So, what do you say? It seems I have little choice, but yours is a generous offer, so I thank you. Brilliant! Oh, Jonathan, this is one for the book, and the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Here's hoping. I was beginning to be concerned. Worry no more, Nurse Crane, for I bring good news. Oh, Doctor, what a night. We lost two more patients. Nurse Scow said she couldn't take it anymore and resigned. Yes, well, I'll make a new rotor in the morning. In the meantime, find a good bed for Mr. Hampton. Be sure to pay attention to his needs. Of course, Doctor. I mean, she looks overworked. She's oh, and Dorothy. soaked in blood. Yes, Doctor? Doctor Reed here has just returned from the front. He served King Country and will be joining us here at Pembroke. We're very lucky to have gained a surgeon of his talent and one so experienced in blood transfusions. That is good news indeed, Doctor. <laughs> She's got oh, a hand yes. full. Let me get going. <sighs> Here at Pembroke, it's not what we have, but what we haven't. It's only thanks to Nurse Crane and the staff that our ship doesn't sink. If you have any questions, just ask her. Duly noted. Thank you. Your assistance is required, Dr. Swansea, immediately. Welcome aboard, Jonathan. We'll catch up after my rounds. Coming, Nurse Crane. I'm coming. He's awfully calm. Go on, let go of my hand. Get going. You have a job to do. I've scrubbed up pretty well. Analyze his blood in the hospital. Pembroke Hospital, district status, healthy. I do need to heal. Hello? Oh, snap! Oi! Oh. Am I going into a blood haze? Play it. Drink at this river. Try it all. Try it. No, this man needs help. <sighs> oh, come on, you bastard. I won't bite. Sir, please. You've lost too much blood. Calm yourself. You think I didn't notice? Stop your staring and get me to an hospital, you ass. You should be more polite. I mean, he's, he's panicking, he's... Blood quality, he's healthy. Blood quality is largely influenced by the health and number of hints. No, he's been stabbed. He's not in a good way. I'm not going to chide him for being more polite. I'm not going to kill him. Can I... I'll let you bleed, I'll kill you, be more... Oh, no. I'm in a bit of a blood haze, I think. You should be more polite. Insulting a good Samaritan. Not exactly the way to get rescued. All right, all right, sorry. I am in pain here. We got to spill it out onto the street and you're yabbering on. Yeah, yes. fair point. That's a very nasty wound you've got there. Take my word, I was... I am a doctor, Dr. Jonathan Reed. <sighs> Name's Clay Cox. I'd appreciate you helping me to a better place, Doc. Follow me, Mr. Cox. Let me assist you to that better place. Oh, it's very tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> to drink the blood of your prey, you first need to mesmerize them to lead them out of sight from others. You mesmerize... or your mesmerize level must be equal or higher than a citizen's resistance. Press Q. Dance with him, the dark. 
dance of life and death. I'm not in a dancing mood. Press to embrace. Space to release him. Embrace and Clay will provide a massive EXP boost, but be aware that there will be consequences. Learning about citizens and collecting their hints will increase experience gained. If drinking the blood of citizens is gonna cause consequences, I may as well get as much as I can out of it if I need to. Well, let's get him help. Let's release him. No more. Not tonight. Not like this. I will not take another life. He still needs medical attention. Go on, Clay. You okay? Just, just, just stay there. I'll send somebody for you. I hope. Oh, hello. Ah, more things. Look, yes, I am a doctor, I swear. Into the Pembroke Hospital. Right, how... Yeah, I'll go, I'll go get help. Oh! It is wise for the huntsman to sometimes let his prey go. But no famished hunter can run for long. But, so... Somebody is talking to me. The man who turned me. The beast that turned me. Oh, I'm here. Doctor, where have you been? I've little time to play hide and seek with new staff members, no matter how illustrious they may be. Yep, sorry. I found a wounded man by the docks. He answers to the name of Clay Cox. He yes. requires urgent medical attention. He's been stabbed a couple of times. Already making the rounds. That's the Pembroke spirit. Thank you. I'll ask our porter, Milton, to bring him back immediately. Thank you, nurse. What can I do for you? Dr. Swansea insisted we provide you a quiet office. You'll find it on the second floor with your name on the door. Delightful. Thank you. My name on the door. Nurse Crane, isn't it? Yes, Dorothy Crane. Welcome to Pembroke Hospital, Dr. Reed. Your office has been prepared. That was quick. I've... I have a couple of questions about the hospital, if you can help me. I would like to ask a few questions first. Let's see the details about Miss Crane. She's healthy. Resist level two. She is the pillar of this social circle, this community. Or this area. This district, okay. I imagine without her, Pembroke Hospital is going to go down to, well, go to pot. How is Mr. Hampton, the, the guy we brought in? And Mr. Hampton, the patient we brought in. How does he fare? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. Poor thing was in quite a state of shock. He's not going to turn, is he, now that he's been bitten? Um, have you known Dr. Swansea long? What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. Well, he knows me more than I know him. It's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough, and better than me. The administrator has better things to do than mix with us. You sound a little bitter about that, perhaps? Well, I've only just met him. Apologies, I've only just met him the once. This is sudden. I've only just returned to England. Dr. Swansea is a brilliant surgeon and the most compassionate physician. I'm gonna go back. Um, so my room, the second floor? Am I, like, quarters next to the office, or...? If you could point me in the direction of my room again, nurse. Second floor of the hospital, left after the stairs. It's the last vacant office at the end of the corridor. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I'll get going. Thank you, Nurse Crane. Anything I can... steal? No? What have we here? City, you. Life saved by efficient... Medical aid is a blow struck at the... of the flu epidemic. Volunteers make a difference. Dr. Swansea is right. 
This place seems perfect to conduct my research. The pain. It's near again. Almost too perfect. In the name of mercy, they depend on you. Nurses are needed now. Inquire at the nearest off appointments office of the Ministry of Labour and National Service or write to 15 Kingsway, London. They are really struggling with this epidemic. He wasn't exaggerating when he said he's on the brink. Or, oh, we're the last bastion between the epidemic and the rest of London. So, I presume this isn't me? Nope. First floor. So, not all the stairwells open. Oh, let's not sprint. Let's do a light jog. Down to the first floor. Or is that... I'm confused. We're in England. Ground floor is the ground floor. Second floor... Or the... Climb the stairs. You get to the first floor. So, it should be another level up. Or not. Dr. Reed. My name is embossed in brass already. Dr. Reed. That was quick. This must be the place. It's definitely away from prying eyes. Relegated to the shadows. A kingdom of my own. At least I won't be sleeping in a coffin. That's a good point. Not about sleeping in coffins. Dragon Bane. The ancient sword with a Latin phrase engraved on the blade. It's been forged in Wales during the 6th century and belonged to Paulus Aurelia Aurelianus, founder of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole. Legend says he had this blade forged before he chose the path of exile and left England with his people. Dragon's Bane has been passed to each new primate of the Brotherhood, and may have been used in secret ceremonies when a primate was sent on a path of war to defeat a hostile creature. The sacred sword was supposedly lost during the schism be of between the Brotherhood and the Guard of Bruin in the middle of the 19th century. It seems a few copies may have been made, but this is the true and original Dragon Bane. So, the Guard and the Brotherhood were once one. Or at least, used to work together. 75, that is 58. That's a... Easy decision. Ah, okay, so if I have a two-handed weapon in my second slot, it takes the place of the gun as well. The Barker. Nicknamed Barker because of the noise produced when firing, the shape of its large muzzle, oh, and the shape of its large muzzle, this pistol was conceived, crafted, and held by Carl Eldritch, second leader of the Guard of Pruin. Heavy, not accurate, and supplied with, hev uh, with a customized magazine, it is a gun designed to quickly make big holes in its target. Carl Eldritch asked to be buried with his gun, so as to be able to shoot himself in case of a vampire would trick him by somehow offer him with the poisonous gift of immortality. However, the gun was mysteriously stolen before the funeral and never seen again. We've not got any serums. I should rest. Article on Econs. It is a rare opportunity and almost a privilege to approach a vampire, to observe their most intriguing physical and psychological traits with a scientific and rational eye. Here are some of the most fascinating abilities I've personally observed over the last 10 years while interviewing a few vampires, or Econ as they prefer to call themselves. Supernatural Speed. A vampire can act and move like a mortal in all his actions, but the trained eye will spot that they have the keenest senses and can react quicker than any mortal. On a few occasions, alarm, surprise, necessi necessity to flee, 
I have seen a vampire move so quickly, it is almost as if he had vanished just to reappear somewhere else. The human eye cannot follow their movements when they act so quickly, but it is not a teleport or dematerialization. It is only supernatural speed. For me, it is a cat-like attribute, which allows them to run, dodge, or jump longer and faster than us. I also notice that such speed seems to exhaust them, and they are bound to physical limitations. Mesmerism, one of the most powerful abilities a vampire can deploy in the capacity to force a mortal to obey them. I call this trait mesmerism, but it has nothing to do with the mortal ability to alter a subject's mental state. A vampire can bend a mortal to their will, and they can even break a mind. A vampire I interviewed even told me, the more a subject tries to resist, the more permanent the damage will be. As if the vampire could literally fracture the target's psyche. The same vampire explained to me that this ability required time to master, and that the result could vary wildly from one subject to another. Implant a false memory, erase a painful one, the possibilities are endless and frightening. Blood Awareness this may be the most catastrophic ability of all concerning vampires, since it is the cause of so many tragedies for them and us. Vampires crave blood. They must use their will to restrain themselves from frenzied drinking every drop of blood they can see. They need blood to function and to express their full supernatural traits. A famished vampire can be very weak, even if he cannot die of hunger or thirst. This urge, this need for blood, may explain why a vampire is so aroused by it. A vampire confessed to me that blood could sometimes blind him, since its smell and attractiveness can be so strong. When he focuses, a vampire can almost see blood all around them, inside warm bodies, through walls, on a supposedly clean weapon. The same vampire even told me he can see if a mortal has clean blood or ill, and that in some cases, he can even sense diseases, infected clothes, or even items in a room. If this is true, it could have so many medical applications it almost beggars belief. Right, let us analyse. The blood at the workbench, and not at one of the medical apparatus. A flesh or a fresh sample of William Bishop's blood in a small tube. I've learnt a serum from the blood. Regenerate 300 health points instantly, then 150 health points over 15 seconds. So I need a water sturdy blood sample. Glass vial. Ferrous tartrate and sodium hydrochlorite solution. I could recycle my own watch. Oh, I, can, I see. I can recycle materials. Let's recycle... Well, maybe we'll hold on to the watch for now. William Bishop's blood is much more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. But this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. I didn't turn the into a wild about beast. To rise. I can feel it. I'll continue tomorrow night. I can feel it. I have so much time now. So much time now. I've got all the time in the world. If I so choose. Well, I can't say sleeping in my office is my um idea of comfort, but I've no right to complain. At least it's safe. And we may as well. Well, we're going to have to. Let's increase stamina. Oh, this goes a long, long way. Over to 150% endurance. And let's boost our health as well, all the way up to plus 500. Defensive. Coagulation. You will block your target's blood in their veins, making them defenseless. Oh my word. 
Blood Barrier. You create an invisible barrier, absorbing direct damage until it fades or is destroyed. Increase the damage inflicted when using bites in combat. Increase your life regen when using bites in, com in combat. That's plus 100% damage. I know it doesn't do a lot. Oh, go. Is that a thousand plus 1400% damage in combat? Let's go for this. So I can increase the number of serums I can carry, increase the number of bullets, increase my blood capacity, and increase your blood absorption when using bite. An ultimate rage, you lose control and let the beast take over for a short time. The beast teleports itself to all enemies around you and strikes them with furious blows. Abyss, you create a shadow vortex at your target's feet, coming to life. The shadows interrupt an enemy in the area and inflict tremendous damage. And Blood Cauldron. You focus your power to boil your target's blood, causing it to violently explode. Oh. Dealing damage to the target and anything nearby. That's quite gruesome. I think, out of all of these, Rage seems a good one. Blood Cauldron. Not, not about that. Not so much. So, Tactical Spring. You perform a supernatural move to your target and cause damage upon landing. Interesting. I wish I'd seen this before I spent all my experience, but now we know. Shadow Veil. Toggle, you drain your stamina to fade into the shadows and you become invisible to most enemies. Moving in this state will drain more stamina. You will exit the shadows if you attack or dodge, or when your stamina is completely empty. Interesting. I definitely want those two. If I'm to stay here until my research is complete, I'd better learn to hide my true nature from the mortals. Oh, they're mortals. My thirst for blood. Wait, is somebody calling me? Oh, time to go blend in. Oh, nurse. Nurse Crane. I... Yes, Nurse Crane? How can I help you? I'm so sorry. I know Dr. Swansea wanted you to rest, but we have somewhat of a crisis. A crisis, you say? Our supply of antiseptics is nearly depleted. I was hoping there was another box up here, but... But there is not. There's no antiseptic at all in this hospital. How much have we been using? What type of hospital are you running? No oh, antiseptics. It's a bit more aggressive than we intended. You've been away too long, Doctor. With the war and now this epidemic, supplies have been running scarce for months now. I may have a solution. In France, during the war, drugs shortage was a daily problem, and we had to use our wits to overcome the shortages. However do you mean? If combined correctly, certain household chemical products can be used in a pinch instead. Now, where's the hospital storeroom? The storeroom? Fat chance. This is the Pembroke. And space is luxury we don't have. Everything used to be stored in the old morgue. Well, that's your Perhaps story, you man, isn't it? First. Where is this morgue? It's the large building behind the hospital. You'll need to go in the back door because it's been sealed off for sanitary reasons. Take this key. It opens a small back entrance at the end of a narrow street. The abandoned morgue behind the hospital. A small door at the end of a narrow street. On my way, then. Thank you, nurse. Sounds charming. Uh, don't mind me. I know this is urgent, but let's have a wonder. It's locked. Locked? How do I open that? Dr. Tippett, Dr. Strickland, and Dr. Acriod. So they share this office? I cannot enter. No, let's probably not just wander into their office unannounced. Ah, lovely. I, uh, live just down the hall from open surgery. Now that, that is a nasty looking saw. A used hacksaw. Joy, what a weapon. Or probably a very nasty weapon, actually. T. Elwood's medical file. 
patient Thomas Elwood, male, 28, followed by Dr. Tippett's. Status, convalescence. Date of admission, September 16th. Date of release, to be determined. The patient's face has been heavily burnt and disfigured by a bum during the war. Even the use of the strongest sedatives he affirms to regularly endure severe pain from the wounds, as if the flames are still burning under the skin, he says. Examinations of the... Oh, I'm going to struggle with medical terms here. Cicatrized tissues show no trace of inflammation, infection, or swelling. Scars are clean. Could it be a case of persisting nerve damage? The patient never ceases to blame himself for his dif disfiguration. Could it be a case of guilt of the survivor? Phantom pain manifesting as a punishment for not dying with his comrades? Seems likely. Now... Hello. Nope, okay, we cannot just walk into every door we see. It'll probably also be a bad habit to make. Now, I'd better... Uh, excuse me, is this... Thomas? Uh, hello. Good evening, sir. I wish I could be sick again. Can I help you? Unless you're here to fix my face. No. I don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. How... How has life been since you came back to London? You say, um... German shell took your face off. What really happened? Why do you feel responsible for the injury, Thomas? What really happened? I wasn't disfigured by any German shells. It happened during my leave. It was an accident. An accident? It must be embarrassing if you lied. What really happened? Tell me what really happened then. I went with a whore in Rouen. Dead drunk I was. The hotel was a shithole. There was a fire that night. Did you start the fire? Were you trying to avoid going back to the front? That's not uncommon, you know. No. It's just that I was asleep when the flames reached the room. The girl was long gone. Bitch never woke me up. Left me to burn. She could have left before then. You were too embarrassed then. You could have simply said you were burnt in a fire. Why the lie? Why lie about it? Come on. It's one thing to come back disfigured by the Germans. And it's another to get injured in an accident that could have happened to anybody. So you wanted to be more of a hero. Surgery. Or could surgery help you? You won't be able to hide in here forever. You know you can't hide forever. One day you'll have to face your loved ones. Until that day, you have no chance of real recovery. My friends all died in the trenches. It's shameful enough to be alive for these stupid scars. I don't want my children to see me like this. How has it been staying with us? And I know it must be very difficult. Don't want your children to look upon you and be frightened by what they see. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars. If you get my drift. I think so. You're hurting mentally more than physically. It's Dr. Tibbet, was it, who was treating you? Who is treating you? 
Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. Are you... Soldier, do you need assistance? I'm fine. Just do something for this pain, will ya? That's all I'm asking. I, I better get going for now, but we'll catch up later. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. Disgust on every street corner. The daily routine. And I'll talk to her another time as well. She seemed quite out of it. We'd best get going to the old morgue. Hello, Doctor. I presume. Uh, old morgue? Where is this old morgue? Oh. Okay, so end of the street, take a right, down the alley. Good old red post box. That's the back of the hospital. Hello. Oh, I can't pick up the book. Rummage in the trash. Always a little bit of junk in there for us. Due to influenza, this hospital can no longer take any patients. Hospital full. Please go back home. I'm going to turn people away. Now... Time oh quarantine influenza keep out of this area by order of the board of health. Quarantine contagious disease. One shall enter or leave quarantine area without written of the local health authority. Authorized employee of the shall alter, destroy, or remove this card. Violation violating this regulation will be fined. Scowl voices in the garden. I should investigate. If they were to find somebody. This close to the hospital. Let's not have vultures circling the carcass. Oh, charming. Oh, I think they've already found somebody. Come on, man. Oh, what's that screech ability? Come on. Let's get our stamina back. Ow. Ow. Flippin' hell. No, okay. Woof. Okay. If I'm gonna get into a fight, which I am, let's do it a little bit more methodically. They've not seen me. They are stronger than I am. Ow. Let's have a drink. That's better. Come on, back. And not tonight. This one. Go for the steak. Oh. Okay, two swings. Oh. Oh, back. Flipping hell. Oh, there's more. There's lots more. Give me that blood. I'm going to beat them. I need to use their powers against them. Yeah, how do you like that? Oh, flip. Don't do that. Let's heal. Go on. Okay, there's another down. Can I get some blood back from you? 
has it. Satiate my thirst. Oh. Got any blood samples for me? Watery, sturdy blood. Oh, okay. Well, they came to the wrong neighborhood and they won't be bothering us anymore. Now, what do we have here? This isn't the hospital, right? This seems a little too clean and open to have skulls just loitering around out the back. Let's hit the morgue after we hit these bins. For a doctor, I uh, sure do like putting my hands in unsanitary things. A photograph of a smiling and loving couple with a few words written on the back. Milton and Pippa forever. A new citizen investigation is available. You can start a new citizen quest by tracking it and access your map to locate the area to explore. Bring the wallet to its owner. I mean, was this not the owner they were devouring? the morgue. I'm not alone in here. I'm shocked that vampires aren't more common knowledge, given how so many of them are around. People simply mistaken it for the flu. There's a splatter of blood beneath me. Maybe calling out to see who's home. It's not a good idea. There's somebody around. Well, it's locked. I'm gonna find an alternate route down. Surely there are better places to store chemicals. Or anything. This is a large. Right. Quietly. There we go. Not in here, buddy. This is a medical establishment. Oh. Back up, back up. Sugar. I heal. I definitely need more stamina. That's it. Give me your blood. Yes. The behavior is similar to the infected William Bishop. Must be the same strain. This sickness moves faster than influenza. How is it spread, though? Is it spread by biting? Or is it spread as an actual sickness? Because that is going to be a problem if that leaves the East End. Hello. Aha, the key. Downstairs? This key will surely grant me access to the basement. You'd think so. 
let's finish looking up here. Now, where did you come from, sir? That's it. Not been out this long, but I'm getting the hang of it. Right. Say parry me, it's two swings. Come on. Careful. You dead, buddy? That's it. Rest in peace. I cannot enter. Sounds like there's something else on the other side of the door. Hello, who are you? Oh, a vampire hunter. I'll take those bullets, thank you. And shotgun shells, we'll take those too. Balls of Mars. Fortifiers. <laughs> as popular as they are ineffective. But they do contain iron tartrate, and that might prove itself useful. Lucky for us. They're popular. Hopefully they will be here in abundance. Looks like the vampire hunter got one before he went down. Oh! This one seems a little stronger than the rest. Better not be down waiting for me. No, but they are. Right, we've got two. Let's try stun one to These start this. These skulls out. feed from corpses and the husks of animals. They're not after blood. So they're just. Something is clearly wrong, obviously. Come on! That's it. Stamina. Yes. Come on. Oh, keep the dodging. Oh, flip. Ah, get off me. Come on, back, back. It's gonna heal. Another drink in before we finish you. That's it, down you go. Excellent. 